Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Today in History. Let's uh, do a bit of a time travel to 11 months ago. This day in history, February 24th uh, on uh, 2020. What happened this day was that uh, former Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein was found guilty of rape and criminal sexual assault in a landmark case that reignited the Me Too movement. Now, Harvey Weinstein was an American. He was very big in the film and uh, arts industry, but he was convicted as a sexual offender. And the former film producer in October 2017 had so many women, you know, coming forth to basically give stories about their sexual abuse, you know, dating back to the to the late 90s and to, of course, this this past few years. And uh, over 80 women gave uh, testimony against him saying he had sexually abused them. And we had an American, an American actress, um, Alyssa Milano, she tweeted and said, if any woman had been sexually assaulted, she should simply retweet and say me too. Funny enough, lots and lots of women, millions of women by the end of that day had tweeted Me Too. And it started that revolution, even though an American sex, uh, sex activist, an act, uh, gender activist, had been talking about sexual abuse and basically healing for sexual uh, abuse survivors many years ago, China Banks. And this basically kicked off and Weinstein was, you know, went to court, sentenced, he was found guilty of sexual abuse, criminal sexual assault. He was sentenced to 23 years in prison. He was uh, arrested and his earliest possible release date is November 9, 20, 2039. He has been incarcerated now and uh, his lawyers say they might appeal this case. So that's basically what happened today in history 11 months ago. Former Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein found guilty of rape and uh, criminal sexual act and it was and still is one of the biggest um, um sexual assault uh, and abuse um, uh, stories that the world has ever seen indeed i remember a couple of years ago i think it was on you know i'm not sure what year exactly that time uh, magazine um made its uh, person of the year the me too movement and uh, you know what they were able to achieve um with you know speaking out against sexual assault and things that they had uh, suffered or been victims of um, many, many years ago, Kevin Spacey, um, um, Bill Cosby, and uh, you know, just to name a few of those mm -hmm. very, very big names, who are Kelly also, um, who of course uh, were found guilty over time of sexual assault, and um, you know, of course had to either you know be sent to jail or you know go to court to defend themselves. So it was a start, you know, and I'm hoping that you know more can be done, more can be achieved uh, with regards um, unraveling crimes of the past and you know also let people know that even if it happened 10 years ago it's still okay that you speak out you know and out um, a, a predator and um, you know someone who has you know continued to sexual uh, assault women or you know men uh, for many many mm -hmm. years so yes yes indeed and there's so many lessons to take from this me too movement have a weinstein uh, story first of all is the fact that women over there weren't afraid to speak up they, you know these are people who are prominent in the industry as well they weren't afraid to come out and share their own stories of sexual abuse and we saw justice we saw the law you know doing what it should do promptly i mean this case started october 2017 by you know february february 24th 2020 he had been been sentenced, you know, found guilty. Yeah. But here in Nigeria, you find, you know, the cultural issues that would prevent you from speaking up. You say, oh, he's my, he's my boss, so to speak. He's an elder, he's an uncle, he's a brother, he's a family member. And we tend to shield these abusers who go on to abuse other people. And even if you report them, what does the justice system really do about it? Yeah. You know, and it's so, also, it's also, I think where our challenge really is, is, you know, the, the reaction of outsiders to sexual assault, the victim blaming, the fi victim shaming, yes. you know, the always, you know, Nigerians always, or not every Nigerian, but a lot of Nigerians always feel eager to protect the abuser because, well, um, there's no proof, you know, and, you know, start to question, oh, what were you doing there? Or why didn't you say it five years ago? Why didn't you say 10 years there's ago? There's usually that blame you know, put exactly, on the victim. You know, why are you trying to bring down this man of God? You know, and next thing you see that there's policemen sent to protect the church. Um, it, is, it is sad.
you know, and it is. we, of course, would all pray that we never be victims, you know, so that we don't have to go through that whole process of holding back your truth for many, many years simply because nobody will believe you mm. or and, because, you know, you're... And, yes, and Harvey Weinstein here still insists his innocence. Remember, you know, watching the videos of him coming out of court, his lawyer saying he insists he's innocent. He has no idea what he's done. He's innocent. But uh, the testimony is right there. People have come forward. I said over 80 women made, you know, allegations against him. And uh, anyway, the courts, the court eventually found him guilty. All and right. he's serving time right now in prison. I'm going back to the year 2008. Um, he is one of the most popular names in, in governments across the world, in North American country, Cuba. He goes by the name Fidel Castro. Um, it was on this day in 2008 that he officially retired as the president of Cuba after being in power for about 46 years. Um, he was, um, of course, uh, um, um, also held power for about 32 years and then um, head of the Council of Ministers for a couple of other years. He was a Cuban revolutionary and politician who served as Prime Minister of Cuba from 1959 to 1976 and then President from 1976 to 2008. He was also the first Secretary of the Communist Party of Cuba from 1961 until 2011. Um, of course, under his administration, Cuba became a one-party communist state. Um, all industries and businesses were institutionalized and uh, were nationalized, rather. And um, state and socialist reforms were implemented throughout society. Um, there was so much controversy about um, his role and his person and how he was, you know, called a dictator, described as a di dictator. Um, some people agree, some people didn't. Um, but, you know, over time, you know, and after being in power for so long, he eventually uh, went, um, underwent surgery for intestinal bleeding in 2006. And since his health seemed to be failing, he delegated um, his responsibilities as president to his brother. Um, it basically was a one-party system. It, it was a, what they call a rubber stamp um, National Assembly that he had back then. And so his brother basically, you know, didn't have any issues taking over power. Um, in 2007, Raul, his brother, announced that Fidel's health was improving and was taking part in important issues of government. But of course, um, a lot later, to, in 2008, Castro announced that he would not accept the positions of president of the Council of State and Commander-in-Chief in that month's National Assembly uh, meetings. It went on and on and on until his um, eventual death after his health deteriorated. Um, but it was um, the end, a very slow end to um, one of the most popular um, heads of state um, and presidents in, in you know, world politics and history. Yes, Fidel, Fidel Castro's story is very intriguing for students of history because when you look back at how the United States exerted its influence in the world, you find out Fidel Castro was one of the people who stood up to the United States influence. And he led that revolution in 1959, yes. I believe, you know, unseated that uh, president, the ninth president of Cuba at the time, eventually made headway with his 26th of July movement. And uh, he basically opposed everything that the former president stood for. He, all the lands that the former president had sold off, you know, to foreigners, Fidel Castro began to give them out to, began to give them out to locals, you know, Cubans. Cubans. And Cubans praised him as a revolutionary. He, he was seen as a liberator of the people. But Americans would, you know, argue otherwise, call him a dictator. I mean, he ruled for over 40, for about 49 years. There were 10 American presidents, you know, in that went case. in and out of power while Fidel Castro was there in the, in, in the U.S. And there was just so much assassination attempt on him. I remember one, you know, reading one of his, his quotes, and he said that, if there was, an, there was an award for the most assassinated, <laughs> for someone who had been the target of the most, the most assassination attempt, that he would win, he would win that award because there was so much assassination. He was targeted, you know, the US tried to target him with one of his ex-girlfriends. So they tried to lace his radio studio because he was very vocal. They tried, they tried so many ways to kill him, even though the CIA repeatedly denied having any involvement. But eventually, I like how he gracefully stepped out of power and said, this position requires mobility. I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm strong enough to take, to, you know, to continue leading in this position. And he stepped down, but he continued to become, to be very influential in international politics. Yeah. He greatly mediated in conflict in Iran and North Korea with the US. He was just, lots of people, you know, would argue 
that he was a liberator. Won so many awards for, you know, for his peace efforts and all of that. So Fidel Castro, really, today of February 24th, 2008 was the day he, 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 he stepped down. So yeah. there is, you know, the, you know, like you said, you know, there's angles where people would, you know, one side would call him a dictator and an oppressor. Others would yes. say, no, he was a liberator. You know, he saved Cuba. He was um, someone who, you know, knew what he wanted for his people and never would back down. Mm -hmm. Um, the United States would always be described as, you know, the country that plays that role of, you know, giving a dog a bad name to hang it or to kill it. And they've done it in many, many, many um, other countries. Yes. You know, and even yesterday when I was reading through these stories, I was really just thinking, um, why, you know, does the U.S. have that much power? Um, why don't we have Cuba being sanctioned by, you know, um, uh, the United Nations or some other, you know, some of all these. No, they're, um, they're, they're, sanctioned, they're sanctioned Cuba. But yeah. mostly influenced by the United States. And that's, that's where the challenge is. The same way when the U.S. wanted to go to war with Iraq, um, there was a lot of people who said, no, this wasn't necessary, but they still went ahead to do it. The United Nations didn't agree with it, but they still went ahead with, you know, with the war um, in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Now there are regrets over that war. There are people who say, oh, you know, we made a mistake and all of that. But same stories, same thing with Zimbabwe um, and um, sanctions, you know, just mm -hmm. to cripple the economy and cripple the, you know, the country and force um, a leader's hand. But Fidel Castro was one person that survived, like you said, many, many, many years of that <laughs> same, um, 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 you know, uh, I remember one of the U.S. presidents US say, presidents. you know, reacting to, you know, his, his illness, he said he had an intestine disease. And uh, one of the U.S. presidents said, one day the good Lord will take Fidel Castro away. And Fidel Castro said, oh, I think that's why I haven't, I have survived all these assassination attempts. The good Lord has kept me. Absolutely. <laughs> Great story, anyway. So, yes. All interesting, right. interesting fact here. So 2020, February 24th, was the day that the United States court found Harvey Weinstein guilty of, you know, sexually assaulting women, rape, you know, criminal uh, sexual act. He did a little bit of the Nigerian politician's um, <laughs> with the walker, right? Yes. <laughs> so he did a little bit of that. You know, there are times when he went with, you know, walker times. The only thing, he, the extent he didn't go was fainting. Yeah. In court You're always fine until going, you have to come going, to court. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So, yeah. Uh, he, yes. It's a good thing that our Nigerian politicians are teaching, you know, other people across the world. There's something they're learning from us. I mean, one time is one of those people. All right. And of course, I spoke about 2008. Fidel Castro on this day um, stepped down from um, government after ruling for more than 40 years. That's all we have for you today in history. We are going straight into our next conversation. The federal government and governors are meeting tomorrow to have a discussion on, you know, the price of petrol and electricity tariffs. And that comes up right next after this break.